All I can do is give you my ideas and uh, from drawn from my own experiences and what I think it is and where I think it's coming from. Today, we don't have so much big kingdoms. Today, we have big economic uh, programs, big economic countries, or basically, we have cartels. We have a whole set of cartels in an area, interlocking corporations, and behind this, we have a few people who are quite wealthy and who own most things. Now, the normal nature of the beast for very powerful empires, let's call that an empire, it's a corporate empire, a set of corporations empire, is basically a cartel. Historically, as far back as you want to go, we have had cartels. Any time we have a very powerful cartel or set of people that control a lot of things, that resists any means of changing its inflow of control and its inflow of funds and money and its power. You know, everybody's trying to be the big monkey. It's really as simple as that. And so the more powerful the agency, the more powerful the group, the more powerful the cartel, the more they will resort not only to legal means, but to extra legal means to suppress their competition. Uh, you know, this is an openly known today. For example, the greatest uh, espionage in the world is industrial espionage between one corporation and another right here in America. They're the ones that hire all the spies and the spooky equipment and everything like that, by far more than the intel agents do. So that's one thing we have. We have the giant industrial or really cartel, economic cartels in, in, in energy. And it's not one cartel. So there are many, many groups in energy. And each of those has become very powerful in its own area. And each one does not wish to see uh, simple little electrical taps pulling out enormous energy from the vacuum. They would much rather see uh, you burning a lot more oil and so forth. So. Yes, there's a, in my view, there is a very active uh, suppression effort by those kinds of folks. Part of that goes into very unique areas. They don't do it so, more, so much. It's not totally mafia type stuff. It's not like, you know, you just flat get shot. There's some of that. But one of the main re ways of suppressing it is they take a deep psychological profile of an individual that they wish to suppress. What, what it means is they really wish to get him entangled in all kinds of difficulties he can't get out of. Now, a good trait from a human being standpoint may be uh, a very valuable trait to somebody who wishes to manipulate you. For example, suppose you're easy to approach. That's a vulnerability. That's a serious vulnerability. So one's deep psychological profile is examined in great depth by real experts. And any way that you can be gotten to where you're naive, you don't have, who knows international finance? You can be had on a, on a uh, money laundering scheme easily and not even recognize that's what you're in. Uh, so any way that you do not have good knowledge or you do not have ability or you have a vulnerability, they call them vulnerabilities, then they arrange scenarios just like you would write a movie. Uh, in fact, they do it with computers. It's all computerized. And in this scenario, we, have, we write a play where this particular vulnerability is going to be exploited in the target. Now, they keep deep psychological profiles on lots of useful fellows. Uh, these are people who basically have knee-jerk reactions or something, or they're radical, or they have some kind of way they interact which, if could be connected with you, would be in the area we wish the interaction to occur, to get you off into something else totally different from what you're doing. So the next thing you know here, all it takes to set that up may be a phone call and stimulate the interaction to occur. And then the controllers sit back and watch the game go. It's gaming. But it's just like right, watching a movie scenario. Uh, one of these days, we'll probably write a book on gaming and how it's done and... and uh, what kind of the main games they can use. But I can tell you they're very effective. Um, you can get so many different games from so many different walks of life by so many charming folks who are really oily characters that you would not believe it. And those come at you in mass. And usually they bury you. They bury you off in the courts. They bury you off. They get you tricked into doing an illegal act. How would they do that if you, if you wouldn't violate the law? Real simple. How can you be made to violate the law when you're not a criminal? Simple. Let me give you a for instance. 
fellow comes in and he says, you know, we really need to get some real major financing. Every inventor's poor. Everybody's struggling. Nobody's got the money to build all these buildups, which may cost ten, fifteen thousand dollars, twenty thousand a piece. So everybody's struggling for money. So he comes in and we're going to raise this. We're going to form a stock company. We're going to do all these good things. Unbeknownst to you, he goes off to the Securities Exchange Commission and several other people, Treasury Department, and he says, hey, I think I have fallen in with a den of thieves. Of course, he's the CEO now, understand, because he's the guy who knows all this stuff. And I'll tell you what I'll do, if, uh, if you'll give me immunity to prosecution, I'll help you catch these crooks because they're going to do the greatest Monday laundering thing you ever heard of. It's going to come right out of one of these foreign countries, it's going to be scrubbed and come in here to fund this effort. It's going to be laundered dope money or something like that. And you have no knowledge this is happening. And they give him, they jump at the chance, they'll give him the uh, immunity to prosecution. That's their normal modus operandi. They want to catch some crooks, and this guy's going to help them catch some crooks. So then he goes off and sets all this up and keeps you deluded about what's happening. And you wind up in a, where the thing is going to be consummated somewhere, and if you consummate it, you wind up behind bars for about 20 years wondering how you got there when you never did anything to money launder anything. He's the fellow who did it and who set it up, and he testifies against you because he's immune to prosecution. This is one of the standard games. Machiavelli is not dead, he still lives. And these are the games that are played, and it's particularly played in the, the systems where people are trying to build over unity systems. It's been very effective in stopping some of them. Has, do you think lethal force has been used? Lethal force is used. I worked with an inventor, for example, the Sparky Suite is quite well known. And uh, he was shot at once with a silenced rifle from about, a sniper rifle from about 300 yards. The only thing that saved his life was uh, he was an old guy and very feeble there towards that part of his life. And he was stumbling as he coming up the steps and he fell down. He just flat fell down on the steps, caught his foot and fell right forward. And as his head went forward, the bullet went right by where his head was. And of course, the assassin was never found. So there are many cases like that. Some are killed. I believe uh, Marinoff, I believe, to be a kill. I don't believe Marinoff jumped off a building when he was excited on the way to, to uh, talk about his invention and so forth. Gave no indications of it. If I can believe the reports of the people who visited where his body lay, uh, where his body lay on the pavement glowed. And there's only one weapon in, on earth that will kill a human body and leave... Uh, where it lay, lies on the cement, let the cement glow under it. And that's a longitudinal wave shooter, what's called a shooter. So I believe, my personal belief, I can't prove this in a court of law, I don't intend to try, but my personal belief is that Marinoff was killed. He was probably killed by either the KGB or one of their agents from one of the other Iron Curtain, Curtain countries, killed with a shooter and thrown off the building to make it look like suicide. The police probably knew about it, that's why they let the body lay so long before they moved it. They didn't want to tangle with the longitudinal waves from it. So yes, there are some rather bizarre things that have occurred to some people. Uh, as I say, I prefer not to dwell on that, try to get by as much of that as we can and try to dwell on the science. The only way we're ever going to beat all of this stuff, we have to convince the scientific community that there's